The third reading is from the book of Genesis. Abraham's Sacrifice of Isaac. After these things, God tested Abraham. He said to him, Abraham. And he said, Here I am. He said, Take your son, your only son Isaac, whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah and offer him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains that I shall show you. So Abraham rose early in the morning saddled his donkey, and took two of his young men with him and his son Isaac. He cut the wood for the burnt offering and set out and went to the place in the distance that God had shown him. On the third day, Abraham looked up and saw the place far away. Then Abraham said to his young men, Stay here with the donkey. The boy and I will go over there. We will worship, and then we will come back to you. Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it on his son Isaac, and he himself carried the fire and the knife. So the two of them walked on together. Isaac said to his father Abraham, Father! And he said, Here I am, my son. He said, The fire and the wood are here, but where is the lamb for a burnt offering? Abraham said, God himself will provide the lamb for a burnt offering, my son. So the two of them walked on together. When they came to the place that God had shown him, Abraham built an altar there and laid the wood in order. He bound his son Isaac and laid him on the altar, on top of the wood. Then Abraham reached out his hand and took the knife to kill his son. But the angel of the Lord called to him from heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, Here I am. He said, Do not lay your hand on the boy or do anything to him. For now I know that you fear God, since you have not withheld your son, your only son, from me. And Abraham looked up and saw a ram caught in a thicket by its horns. Abraham went and took the ram and offered it up as a burnt offering instead of his son. So Abraham called that place, The Lord will provide. As it is said to this day, On the mount of the Lord it shall be provided. The angel of the Lord called to Abraham a second time from heaven and said, By myself I have sworn, says the Lord, because you have done this, and have not withheld your son, your only son. I will indeed bless you, and I will make your offspring as numerous as the stars of heaven and as the sand that is on the seashore. And your offspring shall possess the gate of their enemies, and by your offspring shall all the nations of the earth gain blessing for themselves, because you have obeyed my voice. Let us respond using Psalm 16, said in unison. Protect me, O God, for I take refuge in you. I have said to the Lord, you are my Lord, my good above all other. All my delight is upon the godly that are in the land, upon those who are noble among the people. But those who run after other gods shall have their troubles multiplied. Their libations of blood I will not offer, nor take the names of their gods upon my lips. O Lord, you are my portion and my cup. It is you who uphold my lot. My boundaries enclose a pleasant land. Indeed, I have a goodly heritage. I will bless the Lord who gives me counsel. My heart teaches me night after night. I have set the Lord always before me. Because he is at my right hand, I shall not fall. My heart, therefore, is glad and my spirit rejoices. My body also shall rest in hope. For you will not abandon me to the grave, 
nor let your Holy One see the pit. You will show me the path of life. In your presence there is fullness of joy, and in your right hand are pleasures forevermore. Let us pray. God and Father of all believers, for the glory of your name, multiply by the grace of the Paschal Sacrament, the number of your children that your church may rejoice to see fulfills your promise to our father Abraham. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. This is another hard reading. And again, maybe sitting with that, wondering about that, is the way to go for you tonight. Another way to understand this story may be to see what is going on in this ancient culture and time, this time of partial revelation and partial fulfillment. At this time, it would not be a surprise for a devout man to see that he must give up that which is most precious to him to get that thing that he most wants, his son. This is how ancient religious structures often worked, certainly in that area and era. And so Abraham goes, he doesn't question. He thinks this is the way you have to kill in order to get what you want. But on that mountain, the being which is referred to as God throughout the story, all of a sudden is now the messenger of Yahweh. There is a different name that is introduced in this story. Up until this point, it has been the generic God. And now suddenly, the messenger of Yahweh steps in and says, this is not necessary. Here, the substitute is the lamb. Sacrifice the lamb, keep your son. Might this have been a step forward? A step forward in understanding what is truly valued and what really is the relationship between us and the divine. Not one of transaction, but one of gift. Think on this. What does it mean for God to be giving the gift to Abraham instead of Abraham paying off the divine? 